What's up my Soul Tribe family? Welcome to my channel. Today I have something really exciting planned for you. We're gonna be taking an in-depth look at Logic. So recently I just released a bunch of vocal templates for Pro Tools, Ableton, FL Studio and Logic. And I really wanna show you guys how to use it. And obviously with me being a vocalist, I really wanna focus on vocal mixing and recording. So I collabed with my boyfriend Reed Stefan on these templates and he's gonna be taking over the mixing portion of this video and I'm gonna show you guys how I record my vocals. So let's get started. So basically we have a basic loop here with guitar and a couple drums and I wrote a little hook over it. So I have my loop set up so that I can go back and just record a couple takes of each thing and I can go back and comp my best takes. So that was a pretty good first take. There was a couple flat notes on the second half of my vocal, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that again. So I wanna record that second half a couple more times because I do sing it louder than the rest of the take, and so I wanted to turn my gain down one notch, and that's a really important tool when you're recording. You wanna adjust your gain knob depending on how loud you're singing. So let's try that again. One notch down. So the first thing that I wanna do before I record my backgrounds and harmonies is comp out my lead and add the auto tune. So I'm gonna go over here to the left where there's an empty space for a new plugin. Go down to audio units. I like to use universal audio and Tari's auto tune real time. And the song is in A major. So I'm gonna go ahead and click A major. Let's hear this. Okay, so I actually like that take already. So let's just keep it moving. Okay, like that. Okay, so I like everything except for that no, because that's slightly out of tune. So let me see if I can find a better no. Nope. <laughs> okay, so out of this comp, I would like to re-record this one note because it's flat. So let's get a better take of this and we should be good to go. No. That should be good, let's hear that. All right, perfect, we got our lead done. Let's do some background vocals. The first thing that I like to do is always record my doubles. And basically what a double is, is the same exact take as a lead, just different versions of it. So when you're doubling, you don't want to just copy and paste the lead because then you're going to have problems with phasing. It's not going to sound good whatsoever. So you're basically just going to re-record everything the same way. Sometimes I like to do this by simply recording a bunch of takes in the same playlist and then I'll just like pull doubles down from that. But today I'm just going to do it separately. <laughs> We got our doubles now. I know I recorded two of these, so I'm just gonna highlight the parts that I want and then collapse this playlist. Okay, so I hear a note that's flat in one of these doubles. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Let me just check this out. Yeah, 
Let me let's go up here and record this part. Give it as you take. I think we should be good with that one. So I'm just gonna highlight this note. Let's hear that now. Perfect. So a really easy place to start when recording background vocals is recording either the high octave or the low octave, depending on where the vocal sits in your voice. So let's go ahead and do the low octave. But before I do that, I'm gonna turn up my gain knob because when you're singing really low, it's hard to hear it. So we want to make sure that we can hear it nice and clear. Awesome, we got one octave done. Let's do our next one. I always like to do two of everything because we pan one left and we pan one right. And we pan everything at a different level so that there is a full spectrum of sound. So let's record our second low octave. Give no effort, it's okay. All right, awesome, so we have our two octaves. Now before we add a couple more harmonies, I just wanna eliminate some of this excess uh, space and breaths and background noise that I have going on here so that I have a cleaner vocal to sing to. So I'm gonna click Command and drag and delete. I always like to delete the breaths on all my background vocals because you do not want excess breaths going on and all your takes it just sounds really really messy and it's a great trick that i use to keep everything sounding clean i really only keep the breaths in the lead and sometimes i even delete breaths in the lead if i don't need it depending on what it's like so we'll go into detail edit in a second but i just want to do this so i have a better take to sing to so i know that i want to do a couple more harmonies so the first thing i'm going to do is just duplicate uh, these tracks by Command D. Um, bring this down. I also want to add auto tune to the rest of my channels, the same auto tune that's on my lead. So, an easy way of doing that is clicking X to see your mixer. And then we're just going to go ahead and drag these down and make a space at the top option. And then you drag it over. So now you have auto tune on this channel. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest. Okay, so now everything is auto-tuned the same way, and I just want to add one more harmony. You take effort, it's okay. I'll keep on giving it you take. Oh, I'm it you take. So now that we have all of our vocals recorded, lead, doubles, harmonies, backgrounds, ad-libs, I'm going to flatten every single track individually so that we can go ahead and do more detailed edits. So by doing that, you click this letter here, flatten. I'm going to go through and delete all of the breaths in the backgrounds that I missed because once again, it sounds incredibly messy when they're all going at the same time. And I think I got them all. I also like to eliminate the S's in the background too because there's really no need to have multiple S's and that should be good. All right, let's clean up this lead. So I went ahead and I flattened my lead and a couple of the backgrounds. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and find my breaths in the lead and take the gain down. For example, Command Highlight and double click so now it's a new take. And I'm gonna go ahead to the left and find my gain and just take it down a bunch. And let's see how clean that sounds. Okay, cool. And for this breath, I don't feel like it's necessary, so I'm just gonna delete it. That P is a little bit offensive, so I'm gonna highlight that and turn the gain down a bit. You get the point, you just do that for the rest of your take. Make sure you're taking down any harsh consonants, breaths, and you have a clean vocal. It's time to mix these vocals. Carrot did an excellent job recording, comping, 
editing and cleaning all these up. And when you use a template that has good channel coloring and naming, then everything basically falls into place and organizes itself visually. But Kara took the extra step and went ahead and cleaned up all the unnecessary space and applied crossfades, which means that we're ready to mix. Now this logic template was created using Kara's vocals, so there's not too much that I wanna change to the actual chains here, but what I do want to customize is the way the effects sound and how they automate to the song itself. And the other thing that Kara did that you wouldn't see in your copy of this template is the auto-tune here at the beginning, but you could use the stock logic one that's really up to you. Let's take a listen and start out with just some basic volume adjustments and see what we think. I think the really low notes sound better tucked towards the center slightly more rather than having them pan so far out. I think that helps the stack feel a little bit better. I think the lower notes should just be towards the center anyways, kind of like how you do a mix. So I'm just gonna adjust the panning on these really low harmony notes to be less towards the outside and let's listen further in. And these really high notes, I think I'm gonna pan all the way because we have some other supporting notes underneath it that are panned halfway. And that'll give this little background vocal part a nice spread. Another trick that I wanna do to give these ad-libs a little bit more movement is I'm gonna create a new track with duplicate settings. And the only thing I'm gonna change is, let's just pan this about minus 23 and we'll pan this about the same. And we're gonna grab every other ad-lib and bring it down. And that's gonna give a nice back and forth to all of our ad-libs. Same volume, same effects, just different panning settings. I like that. I like the amount of compression on the lead, but I feel like all these harmonies and background vocals could use a much lower setting. So I'm gonna grab all these and just put it at 50%. Or you could take the first one and fix it and then hold option, copy it all around. So now we have lighter compression across all of our harmonies and we'll stop there. We'll leave that on the ad libs compressed the way they are. That feels a lot more natural to me and that allowed me to bring up the volume of them a little bit more. I'd rather have the background vocals really dynamic and the lead really well compressed and in your face. Now we get to the fun part. Let's mess with the wet effects. I'm just gonna solo this channel one by one and here you can see this is being sent to all these buses and if you want a little cheat sheet as to what each one is, you could take a look at over here. So bus two goes to our reverb, half note delay, quarter note delay and so on. So let's just take a listen to what our reverb is doing. Then backwards when you don't give no effort, it's okay. I'll keep on giving it you take. Let's check out half note. Oh, toxic patterns, cause I don't know. I don't know no better. I'll keep on giving it you take. I might actually just use that in a couple spots. Let's check out quarter note. Then backwards when you don't give no effort, it's okay. I'll keep on giving it you take. I like that one a lot. I'm gonna leave quarter note on. Let's check out the eighth note delay. Then backwards when you don't give no effort, it's okay. I'll keep on giving it and you take. That one's kind of busy. I'm gonna run that at a really low amount, just as like a subtle thickening, and let's check out the slap. Then backwards when you don't give no effort, it's okay. I'll keep on giving it and you mm, take. Actually, I think the quarter note delay and the slap delay and the reverb together make a really nice lead vocal chain. And then we'll just use this delay here wherever we feel like it. So I'm gonna hit the letter A to see our automation and let's have, instead of volume, let's go to our main send the half note delay 
And let's have just it's okay get echoed. Effort is okay. I keep on giving it you take. I really like how that fills the gaps, but I don't want it to compete with the lyrics. So let's check this out. Then backwards when you don't give no effort is okay. I keep on giving it you take. Oh. And that's a great way to use your effects without cluttering your entire lead vocal. And I think we can just apply half note delay on the leads only. So I'm just gonna go through all these channels. Let's actually just highlight all of these and let's grab the third one and we could just turn them all down together like that. I'm gonna use the quarter note delay. I liked that delay and I'm not gonna use the eighth note delay. And since these are already stacked, I'm not gonna use the slap either. I feel like that's just something to widen the lead. These are already so wide, I don't think they need to be sent to the slap. So we're just giving them reverb and quarter note delay. It's not for these harmonies, since they're just doing this one slow note, I think I do want those to trail out. And I also want these, since they're doing their own part, to really be reverbed out so that they get pushed further into the background. Push all that up. Let's add some more reverb to these ad-libs too. I know we're already sending a lot, but let's send a lot more. The final thing I want to do is go on to my dry vocals group, and I think I just want to add a little bit of EQ here. I think just that little bit of 8K helped them. That'll be perfect for our vocals group. I'll just play that with and without, and you'll hear a big difference. This is like mastering your whole acapella almost. And with it. Maybe a little bit less. Hey, well there you have it, how to record and mix a vocal using Keras Logic Template. I hope you enjoyed all the tips and tricks in this video, and if you want to get yourself a copy of this vocals template, you can head over to iamkara.com where we have templates for Logic, Ableton, FL Studio, and Pro Tools. And I'll catch you guys next time in another tutorial. Peace out.